Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Political Forum. This is your chance to talk with elected officials in Chicago. Now, my name is Mike Jacobs, and I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications here at KTV. And joining me tonight, the, from the 6th Ward, Alderman Roderick Sawyer. Good, Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. So, all right, folks, this is now your chance to call in. If you have a question, comment, or a concern for Alderman Sawyer, call in. The number's at the bottom of your screen, 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. And please let your friends and families know that we can also be seen online at cantv.org backslash hotline. So once again, good evening. Thanks. So good first, evening. let's talk about for people who may not be familiar mm -hmm. with, with you or, or you know, and, and your ward boundaries, mm -hmm. let's talk about that for a minute. Yes, my, my ward is the 6th Ward, and our boundaries are roughly 60, 66 to 87 State Street to Cottage, and we cross over the expressway, and again, roughly 66 to 74th Expressway, and we go far west as Bishop. And we encompass the neighborhoods of Chatham, Park Manor, and Inglewood. And here's uh, the information for folks who need to get a hold of you with your address on South King Drive at... Uh, 8001 South King Drive and your ward phone number is 773-635-0006. That's correct. So now, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Is it, is it by stopping in or is it by, uh, is it by... We have an open door policy. You can stop in. Every time I'm there, I see everybody that comes in. Uh, you can also email us, Facebook us, get us by Twitter. All the social media pl platforms are available. And But the easiest thing is just to come in and uh, knock on the door and come see us. All right, wonderful. We, well, we have a lot of things to talk about tonight. Yes. First thing that's on a lot of people's minds is the election. We're fresh off it, a little more than a week. Uh, talk about, first of all, for you, first of all, congratulations on, on being elected once Thank again. You. So for you personally, what can you do to improve on uh, your job, and what can you do, and what do you see the ward doing in the future? Uh, I was glad to be reelected to a second term. Uh, I spent a lot of my first term, quite honestly, trying to plan my area. My area's been stagnant for many years had not had a lot of the development. So I spent a lot of time talking with developers, going to uh, seminars, going to other programs, trying to put together a face for the ward, which, what it should look like. And the second term, I'm planning on implementing that. So a lot of focus on economic development, uh, redoing our uh, core areas, State Street, 75th Street, 79th Street, uh, Halstead, Cottage Grove, uh, we have a lot of plans for this, and, and we're going to implement these plans coming in the second term. Well, it looks like we have our first caller of the night. Caller, are you there? Hi, yeah. Um, the sixth ward, I think that includes Englewood, right? Yes, a portion of Englewood. That's correct. Um, I, I seem to recall something about the large lots program. That was about a year ago. I was just wondering, like, if you had any updates on the progress of that or, or seen any positive results from that. Thank you. Uh, the results remain to be seen. I, I was encouraged by the number of participants in the large lot program. I want to make sure that these lots will be in productive use. Uh, the concern I had, quite honestly, with the large lot program was that people would begin to hoard lots and use them as additional parking or and not really develop the lots, make them into uh, whether even if it's a garden or build another property. I want to see some economic development. One of the biggest problems that we have in the city of Chicago, we always complain about, we have no money. Part of the reason we have no money because we have no base. We have no tax base. So we need to start improving upon our tax base, getting these lots into productive use. That means they're paying taxes. We receive a share of those taxes. We can start doing something in the city. Uh, so it remains to be seen right now, but I'm encouraged by the participation and the number of lots that we put out to good use. Thank you for that call. And, folks, looks like we have about 15 minutes left in the show. So if you have a question, comment, or concern, the number, again, is at the bottom of your screen, 312-738-1060, 312-738-1060. So uh, talking, you, you were talking about economic development. There, yes. are some, uh, there are some a lot of things going on in your ward as you're trying to bring businesses and retails in, yes. in. Is that correct? Yes. Part of what we were doing, like I said, we were planning a lot of our areas. And uh, one great person always told me to plan your work, then work your plan. <laughs> So we were, uh, part of what we did already was uh, started down zoning certain areas in, this, in the uh, ward, particularly down the State Street corridor. Uh, it, it, it amazes me for me to have a portion of State Street which abuts the Dan Ryan Expressway, not to have uh, some sort of development down State Street. Hundreds of thousands of cars travel the expressway every day, but we don't give them a reason 
to get off the expressway to buy something. When they buy something, again, they pay sales taxes. Sales taxes go to the city so that we can do the things that we need to do uh, as far as uh, keeping our city up. Well, it looks like we have another caller. Caller, sure. are you there? Yes, I'd like to know what is the new reentry service center and what will they be doing in Chatham? Yes, the reentry service center is actually in the 8th Ward, but I do know a little bit about it. Uh, Manuel Barr is one of the uh, managers there, and he's a childhood friend. That reentry program is for those that uh, have formerly been incarcerated and are looking for work. What they do is they'll have uh, various levels of reentry programs, uh, work readiness, uh, job placement skills, resume writing, dress for success. It's giving those people that really want to work a second chance and giving them an opportunity to get connected with a job. So I'm actually very encouraged about it. I saw some posts on the Internet that I was a little bit disturbed about. Uh, it was, um, you know, very negative towards something like that. And I think, you know, quite honestly, one of the biggest requests I get in my office from residents are jobs, and particularly those that have uh, some past, some history, criminal history. And they want to work. They want to be productive. They know they made a mistake, and they want to correct that mistake, but they want those resources so that they can find work. This is an opportunity for them to find work, and I'm happy that they're doing that. And I'm encouraged. I'm going to meet with Emmanuel Barr, who is the manager, uh, sometime this week. And, again, I, I want to take a visit, to a tour of the place and see what they're doing. And, again, I'm encouraged by that. That's something that's positive. Well, thank you for that call, caller. Looks like we have yet another call. Caller, are you there? Hi. Hi, Alderman. Congratulations on being reelected. Thank you. I wanted to actually talk about the um, elected school board. So in this past election, it seems like most of Chicago supports, or those who came out to vote, support an elected school board. And I wanted to know, um, do you foresee some changes happening in Chicago in terms of that in public education here with Chicago Public Schools. Thank you. I see a lot of changes coming forth in the uh, city of Chicago. As you well know, uh, the referendum was a non-binding advisory referendum, but in my ward, for example, it was upwards of 90 percent that voted in favor of the elected representative school board. Uh, those that know that it takes state action for us to, to get this done, so I've talked to my state legislators and they're very much in tune to this concept. They want to see this going forward. And I'm concerned about this because if we get an elected school board, I think that we can finally get some focus on improving our neighborhood schools. Uh, I have nothing personally against charters. I'm not a big fan of them, but I'm not a big anti-charter person either. But I want us to make sure that we can do whatever we can to improve all of our schools. I think all of our schools deserve all the resources necessary to get to make students want to go walk down the street to go to their school. And I think parents want that as well. They want a high-performing school, whatever their kids' uh, level, ac educational level may be, they want to be pushed at that particular school that could be right around the corner from them. And that's what we should have. Uh, we should have schools that will push and challenge our students wherever they are. No matter where they are, they can be pushed. If those that need help will get help, those that get pushed, get pushed. And I think we can do that in a neighborhood setting. Well, thank you for that call, caller. Looks like we have yet another call. Caller, are you there? Mm -hmm. Alderman, don't some of the people in, your, uh, in the city kind of think we need to have much more lower taxes? If you want new business to come in Chicago, when they do all the, um, the math in terms of when you're talking about square footage and all that, and they figure, and a lot of businesses say, hey, I do business outside of Chicago because by the time I pay for the square footage, I can have a warehouse too because. Businesses are being taxed out, and that's the reason why we don't have companies going to come to Chicago and going to employ people. So talking about economic development and bringing again, business. Yeah, um, again, I, th I think in my area in particular, uh, one of the lower per square footage uh, for as far as rental is concerned, uh, you can come in my area at a reasonable price. Uh, we have a lot of vacancies that we need to get filled. I, I think if you look at our area, depending, I don't know what kind of business the caller was in, but depending on that, they can come to our area set up shop, uh, meet with me, and, and I think we can make it work. Our, For example, our real estate taxes in the city of Chicago are not as high as other areas in the state of Illinois. Uh, we do have a high sales tax that we need to address, but I think that in overall it's a, in, uh, a climate that needs to be worked. Uh, we need to get 
more businesses so that those that can employ locally. And I'm looking, quite honestly, I'm looking for local businesses. I'm looking for people that are in my neighborhood that want to work, that want to set up uh, and establish a business. Because those are the people that will be a little bit more concerned about hiring locally, hiring from within, and building our tax base, building our economic base up. And I think we can do it. Well, thank you for the call, caller. It looks like we have about seven minutes left in the show. So if you have a question, believe me, we'll, we'll, we'll get you in here. We'll get you in. So give us a call. So about, uh, back to the election. I'll tell you mm -hmm. something. Well, we have 19 aldermanic runoffs. I we think have the 18 mayoral. and one maybe. Yeah, yeah that's right. 18 and one maybe. <laughs> one we maybe. have the mayoral runoff. So first question about this, talking about the election. What kind of message are voters sending to, to the Chicago city leaders? I believe that the message is they want change. Uh, and I, I was happy to be a part of the Progressive Caucus where we talked about common sense initiatives that will uh, improve the everyday workers' lives, whether it be the elected school board, whether it be increasing the minimum wage, uh, paid sick leave for workers, extended kindergarten. And a lot of these things the mayor did come on, on board with, but we had been pushing this ever since I got on the council. And I was happy to be a part of that. And these are the things that resonate with everyday average voters. When I went, not just in my ward, I went around all throughout the city because I went to all my colleagues' wards, and they all wanted the same thing. They wanted more transparency in government. They wanted to see things that worked for the masses, not just for the few. Mm -hmm. And I think that's resonating now with the number of runoffs and the uh, mayoral runoff as well. And you, you talked you talked briefly about the minimum wage. That's one thing that uh, that, that you were very much interested in in yeah. terms of bringing your minimum wage up to fifteen dollars. Yes, I was the lead sponsor for the original minimum wage ordinance, which was the fifteen dollar an hour ordinance. And I, I think that to uh, the mayor's credit, uh, he would not have done anything with the minimum wage had we not pushed. Because not only did we introduce the ordinance in council, uh, we staged sit-ins, we went to strikes, we walked workers to and from work that were. Uh, uh, on the front line for the fight for 15. So it was a movement. It was bigger than um, uh, than just an ordinance. It was a movement that was a ground up movement. And I went to other cities and they were uh, protesting this. And it was, I went to Seattle where they introduced a, a higher minimum wage as well. And it was very exciting to get that movement and to show that participatory government does work. If you get more people involved, the mayor will listen and he will uh, uh, make those changes if we can push the right buttons. Now, there's also something in the news that has to do with CPS and bringing in that core testing, that standardized testing, yes. which just happened this week. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is that, you know, in the next week or two, there's mm -hmm. going to be now CPS students are going to be taking these, these core exams. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, they're thinking about funding that, you know, CPS didn't want to lose the funding. Mm -hmm. Right. What does this do? I just I have a concern about over-testing with our children. I, I'm not necessarily opposed to testing. Uh, children need to be test ready. But... Uh, to the point of being over-tested, I, I just have a concern about that. And I was reading about this new core test, and yeah. I, I just have some concerns about it. Like a little bit, more, know a little bit more about it before I make a definitive comment. But I'm really have some legitimate concerns about it. Yeah, because I guess I know that education is it, is key to key to your heart in, yes. in terms of that. Because you know, not every student is the same. Not every school not, is the same. And a, so, when right. you're bringing the, these core, you know, standard core tests, you're going to see definitely different results. Absolutely, and and I think we're not accommodating for that, and and it's going to hurt the students in the end run. Now, another thing also that that you've been pushed, I believe, last month. You were taking a shot at the Dibs program in terms of you know the the, the snow removal. If you can talk about yeah. that. Well, uh, and this is something my ward superintendent and I have been talking about since we've been in office. Uh, in the event of catastrophic snows, I mean, snows that are, we just say they're over 10 inches. Mm -hmm. You know, one, we usually know about them well in advance. <laughs> you know, the radar detect, they say we're about to hit a really big snow. So all we want to do is use something similar to the summer street sweeping program. If we know that this snow is coming and you know, with technology, we know almost to the minute when it's going to hit and how much it's going to hit. All we want them to do is say, okay, day one after the big snow or when it's coming, park on one side of the street, the east and the north side of the street, for example. That way that we can get the snow plows to come and go curb to center on that one side. Then the west and the south side of the street, you park the next day. You're going to have to dig out, but you only have to dig out once. You know, so we're not going to say that it's not going to be inconvenient, but it's only going to be, it's going to be a lot less inconvenient than the way we have it now. And it's something I think we need to probe further. I think the mayor had 
signed on to the, the concept, the idea, and I'm hoping that we'll have some serious discussion on it going forward. Because I'll tell you something, especially with the DIP program, you see that all throughout the city streets. Well, it's you horrible. Know, and it's, it, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. And on top of that, also, as you mentioned, talking about, you know, people who are shoveling out, I mean, elderly people, you yes. know. And it's not very safe. You're on the street where right. there's traffic, and here you are with a shovel, and that's all your only defense against cars. I got calls asking them to please stop shoveling certain streets because, this, you know, the shovel, they would come and they shoveled their spaces out finally, and then the snowplow comes and buries them right back again. <laughs> And they were like, well, we, we get that the streets need to be clean, but could you please stop? Yeah. Right. So we understand. That actually happened to me. I was like, yeah. I swear all well, day happened long. to all of us, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it looks like we're just about wrapping up on the show. So, like, what are some, before we, uh, we let you go, what are some gems, you know, in, in, in your ward, you know, that, that you like to talk about tonight? Well, uh, we got quite some great businesses in the ward that we, we want to promote. One is my, one of my favorites, Brown Sugar Bakery, uh, although it shouldn't be my favorite, but it, it is. <laughs> um we have some great people in the ward. We have um, a, a lot, and we need a lot more. We just, we're about to open up a new bar and restaurant in the ward. Uh, it's about to be finished up. I want to go look at it. It's beautiful. And I'm, I'm making sure that people understand that we're looking for new and innovative businesses to come into the ward. We're actively uh, participating in, in various uh, workshops and seminars. I'm going throughout the city trying to find that next new big thing that may want to move to the uh, Chatham Park Manor or the Inglewood community. So uh, if you have that idea, come call me. Numbers are 635 <laughs> right. 0006. There it is. There it is right there. Please now we contact have, me. We have about 30 uh, seconds left in, you know, in the show. Again, so moving forward, new term uh, you know, for you. What uh, are you looking forward to now moving forward? Uh, I'm excited about, uh, I, I know in the press uh, they talked about our, our potential call center, uh, which we're very excited about. That will produce well over 1,000 new jobs in the city of Chicago and in the greater Grand Crossing community. That's something I'm really excited about. We're hopefully close to getting that finished up. Uh, again, keep continue to improve our business corridors uh, with streetscaping and new businesses. We're working on parking plans. Uh, we're working on a lot of internal things so that when people want to come, all the amenities will be there laid out for them. Well. Looks like that's the show. I want to thank everyone. First of all, thank to Sylvia, who are, was answering the phones tonight. Thank you, callers, for calling in and listening and watching. And thank you also, Alderman Sawyer. Thank you very much. So once again, we are watching, you're watching Political Forum. Tune in next week, Wednesday, at 7 p.m. for our next show. Everyone have a good night.